Sitting in a room full of watch enthusiasts, mentioning Richard Mille is a recipe for chaos. Without a doubt, taking this brand's name is bound to cause a heated argument that could lead to some very hurtful words. Like any controversial topic, Richard Mille has a very polarizing effect among watch enthusiasts. Many love the brand and swear by its unique design and innovative engineering, while others hate it with a passion for its price point and odd-looking design choices. Why would any brand making wristwatches garner so much hate? Anyone who takes a basic look at the company's worth can tell it's not doing too bad for itself. So why is it that it's among one of the most hated brands in the horological industry? To add to the confusion, if Richard Mille is as hated as they say, why is it one of the leading brands in the industry? Well, that's exactly what we're here to talk about. Hopefully, by the end of this video, you'll get to know all about the infamous luxury watch brand and the controversy surrounding it. Then, even you might be able to answer the question, why do people hate Richard Mill? Understanding the Richard Mill brand first requires a look into its history. Founded by the French entrepreneur with the same name, Richard Mill, the brand was first founded in 2001 and aimed to break the shackles of traditional watchmaking in favor of an innovative, modern twist that would redefine the norms in the industry. Though Richard Mill himself was not a watchmaker by any means, he had a vision in his mind and he would stop at nothing to make that vision a reality. He had previously worked with Psycho and Mabo Sin, which gave him a unique perspective on luxury watches and jewelry. Working alongside co-founder Dominic Gwinnett, who was the former owner and CEO of Montres Valjean SA, a watchmaking company based in La Brassa, Switzerland, the dynamic duo collaborated to release their first watch, the RM001. This watch featured a distinct tonneau-shaped case made from a unique material, Alasic, an alloy used by the aerospace industry. This watch set the tone for the brand's future designs, emphasizing a fusion of aesthetics and technology made with materials that were unusual to say the least. The skeletonized dial, paired with a titanium tourbillon and avant-garde design caught the eyes of every watch collector out there, and that's when the industry fell into the abyss of what may be the most controversial argument of the watch industry. On one hand, there's the traditional school of thought that dominates every watch snob's mind. Those people like their watches the way they've always been – elegant, subtle, and with a rectangular dial. These are the same people who swear by Rolex, AP, and Patek, and think about watches according to their history and heritage, and less about whether they offer anything new to the table. On the other hand are the modern enthusiasts, who grew up around the same time concept watches were crawling through the gaps and making every engineering nerd drool. Being able to see the movement of a watch with an artistic twist painted in bold, bright colors meant anyone wearing a Richard Mille was likely going to be the center of attention in any room they walked in. And that's what got many of the richest people around the world investing the same amount as a house on a watch that was made from space metal. Of course, the hype isn't limited to obscure watch geeks who care about things like vibration frequency. There are, of course, artists like Jay-Z, who's defended Richard Mill numerous times and has gone as far as to buy an extremely rare RM47 Samurai, which costs almost $2 million. Richard Mill is undoubtedly backed by some of the most prominent figures in the world, and that certainly helps their case. Even after all this, you're probably still trying to wrap your head around how Richard Mill became so successful. From what we've talked about up until now, it's obvious that anyone who appreciates the brand lies in a very niche category of watch collectors. The hype around the brand isn't as widespread as the hype around, say, Rolex. Well, the thing is that companies like Rolex and Patek have been around for a long, long time and have been the leaders of the industry for as long as wristwatches have been a thing. The hype is deserved. These brands have established themselves as reliable and have become a status symbol for the elite for decades. Richard Mille is only 22 years old, and they're still finding their footing in an already highly competitive market, so it's surprising that they've garnered as much attention as they have for the short time they've been around. Why is that the case, though? Is Richard Mille casting some voodoo on the richest people in the world, somehow brainwashing them into buying more of these odd timepieces that are nowhere near what risk collectors have been buying for so long? Well, in a way, yes. See, no matter what you're selling, there's one strategy that trumps all others in regard to determining your success. 
Marketing Creating a brand that can sell watches priced at hundreds of thousands of dollars requires tactical thinking, and that's exactly what Richard Mill has done since its inception. Besides marketing, the fact that RM watches are unique, the brand has collaborated with many brands and celebrities over the years to make it seem like owning a Richard Mill watch makes you part of an exclusive club. Their partnerships include Airbus, yes, the same Airbus that makes planes, who they collaborated with to create the RM5002 ACJ Tourbillon Split Seconds Chronograph. Moreover, if you ask most Richard Mille fans what makes the brand so special, they're most likely going to reply with, it's like wearing an F1 car on your wrist. That's because the brand has worked long and hard to associate itself with the brand, and some of their watches even have a G-sensor on them, which can adjust the watch's mechanics according to G-Force to ensure the movement works optimally, even if a car is going over 100 miles an hour. The company's F1 collaborations include automobile companies like McLaren and Aston Martin, and drivers like Felipe Massa and Kimi Raikkonen. However, F1 isn't the only sport RM has touched since they collaborated with other athletes like Johan Blake and Rafael Nadal. Wearing a watch that comes out of these collaborations isn't just a symbol of an incredible amount of money, but a show of loyalty to some of your favorite athletes. If this wasn't enough, RM has even branched out to Hollywood, collaborating with none other than Natalie Portman and Pharrell Williams. Of course, these people aren't watch experts, but having their names stamped onto your brand's watches is going to increase your chance of success by a lot. The fact that each piece is highly limited to less than 100 helps a lot with creating a sense of exclusivity. Everybody wants what they can't have, and coming across a Richard Mill watch is hard to say the least. We live in an era where advertising dominates everything, so knowing how to market a brand successfully is the key to becoming the sixth largest watch brand in the world. As times go on, these rare pieces are likely going to increase in value due to their rarity, so demand for new watches may increase even further. Now, does all of this clever marketing mean that Richard Mille watches are necessarily good? No. There's still a huge price to pay for each watch, enough to buy a house. This is probably a huge reason why people don't like the brand. A watch is so overpriced because some celebrity you like supposedly collaborated with the brand to make this watch isn't enough of a reason to leave a hefty dent in your wallet. Although RM watches may be some of the most unique watches ever seen, like the Richard Mille RM Up 01 Ferrari, which is the thinnest mechanical watch ever made, it still costs $2 million, which isn't exactly worth it for everyone. Furthermore, the aesthetics of these watches are an acquired taste. They're big, they're bright, and the shape isn't necessarily the most classy. With most outfits, an RM watch will likely stick out like a sore thumb, and that isn't exactly desirable. It takes effort to pull off watches like these, and not everyone is willing to put in that effort for something that's meant to make every outfit better. In a nutshell, Richard Mille is meant for a very specific category of people. And those people include rich millionaires with enough to spend on a watch for every shirt they own. Richard Mill probably deserves all of the controversy surrounding them. In fact, that controversy might even add fuel to their demand for the watches. The more exclusive the club of Richard Mill enthusiasts become, the more people will be willing to shell out to be part of the club. Either way, it doesn't matter whether you absolutely abhor the sight of an RM watch or adore the statement pieces that push the boundaries of watchmaking. What's undeniably certain is that Richard Mill is likely going to stay for longer than most of us expect, since their demand seems only to be growing, and their plans seem to become more and more brave. They have nothing to prove to anyone, and that means they're likely going to keep making watches in their own way despite all the criticisms. Hopefully this means there'll be more space for newcomers in the world of horology, and we're able to see unimaginable innovation within our lifetime as the years go on.